So, like an example of order being important is uh, if you were to put some stuff together, like the letters A, B, C. Uh, when order is important, that A, B, C is different from C, B, A. Right? Order is important means that order makes a different something. It makes something different. Changing the, the arrangement of those things makes things uh, a different group of things. Um, and this this formula we have is uh, n. Well, let's see um, where we're taking r out of n. So there's a, a group of, of n things, and we are taking out r of them and then arranging them in groups. Why did that not work? Okay. Um, Here, this is what we call combinations. That's when order is not important. An example of that would be ABC is the same as BCA. Whatever other order you could think of, it's all the same when you're talking about combinations. Just, you're just combining things in a group. Kind of B. Yeah. It is the same <laughs> as B. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. Same. Anyway, it's the same. It's the same. Not the same. Okay, but we have to build up to that. We need to first, um, before we can understand 
the application of this formula, or even what it means, we need to understand what this means. And yeah, what is that? Uh, an exclamation point? No. So like, Stop. N with emphasis. No, not N with emphasis. Uh, sure. Yeah. I'm hoping it's like, N. Nope, it is not happy. What if it's just really happy then? Do you want to know what it is, or do you want to keep guessing? Sorry. <laughs> I want to know. OK, and there's that. Uh, so we have to understand what that exclamation point means in mathematics. In English, it means one thing. In mathematics, it means something absolutely different. It means that nothing close to what it means in English. And if you already know what it means, or if we start talking and it rings a bell, just keep it quiet. Okay? Let everybody learn if they still have to learn this, or if they've never seen it before. Okay. Um, that's what we call factorial, and we'll see what it means after we talk a bit. So let's start. Before you can understand that, though, before you can understand what that, that exclamation mark means, we need to talk about not permutations first, but before that, the fundamental theorem our fundamental counting principle, okay, and we can think of that as tree diagram. Right? You already know the fundamental, theory, uh, or fundamental counting principle, I'm sure you do. Um, but before I just say, oh, you know it, let's go over some examples. All right? So before you said a six sided die and a quarter, just two things, <coughs> simple. How many ways are there to roll a die and then flip the quarter? Can anyone count the ways? I'm always in there. So you two two things, you take the die, you roll it, and then you flip the coin, and then you got a two, and then a heads. That's oh, something oh, that's oh, okay. So there's sixteen. No, nope. twelve. Twelve. That's what I meant. I'm. I'm All right, twelve. Twelve. That's what I meant. Okay. So, to count how many ways uh, these things can happen in sequence. Uh, Simple. We can use something called a tree diagram. Okay? We use this tree diagram to first start off with how many ways can the first event happen. So the first event is that you roll a die. How many ways can that first event happen? Six. Six. You can get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. Alright? So there you are. You start. This represents you before you roll a die. And then after you roll a die, you go down one of these branches on the tree. You can go down the branch that leads to one, two, three, four, five, or six. Once you go down the branch that leads to two, it's time to flip a coin. Which, what are the two branches after you roll a two? Heads or tails? Heads or tails. What about if you go down the branch that is you rolling a one, you roll heads or tails? And it's heads or tails all the way down for all six of those options. So the very end, after you go through all the branches possible, like move to the right as many times as you can. And how many times you can move right is dependent on how many events there are. So here there are two. So you can only go down two branches. You can't, like once you go down one, you roll the one and then flip the heads. Or you roll the four and flip the tails. Right? That's another possibility. That's another outcome. An outcome can be a combination of things. Can you uh, start with the heads or any tails first? Yeah, you absolutely could. You could flip the heads, flip the coin, and then roll the die. Yeah. And in the tree diagram, it just look a little different. It would look like go down the branch that's heads or tails, right? And then heads can lead to one, two, three, four, five, or six. And the tails can lead to one, two, three, four, five, or six. Either way, Put heads and tails, heads and tails, heads and tails. In both instances, we wind up with oh. all possibilities. Okay. So the fundamental counting principle says: take the ways event A can happen, multiply it by the ways event B can happen. If there's event C, multiply it by the ways event C can happen. Does that make sense? Simple graphical representation of the fundamental counting principle. You just multiply two events by six events, or six events by two events, and we get the total number of ways that can happen. Can you just count up the final events that happen? Sure, and that's, that's practical if 
there's not that many ways, but what if there's a thousand different ways? If this can happen, 10,000 ways this can happen, then counting them gets unmanageable. But you could, you could write down uh, one heads, two uh, heads, three heads, four heads, five heads, six heads. Then you go uh, one tails, two tails, three tails, four tails, five tails, six tails, right? But then when I add, say, a deck of cards to this mix, how many cards are in a deck of cards? 52, 52 right? That starts to really make things absolutely much, much easier to multiply. Okay. So before you sit, a six-sided die and a quarter. And I forgot to take out that in. And a deck of cards. How many ways are there to roll a die, flip a quarter, and then draw a card? Before you just shout out the answer, how many, what's event A? What's the first name of that? Roll a die. Roll a die. Okay, how many ways can that happen? Six. six. All right, six. One. You don't have to draw the T drop to tree diagram or long. Okay, once we get the fundamental counting principle, we'll just shift over to that. Okay. What's event B? Uh, the word quarter. Flip a quarter. So uh, roll a die, flip a quarter. Draw a card, right? Event C. So event B happens how many ways? Two ways, two ways, two ways. How about event C? 52. So I roll a one, then I flip a heads, and then I pick a card, which can happen 52 different ways. So I have 52 branches coming off of here. It's supposed to look like a paintbrush. So many branches. And, okay, so that's 52 ways that can happen, right? The 52 coming off of every one of these. So here's 52 ways that can happen, 52 ways this can happen, 52 ways this can happen. 625 different ways that can happen. What for? Uh, so we take our two, that's event A, and our six, B and our 52, that's event C. 624 ways for that. And this will be very useful when you start talking about probabilities. Right? Probabilities <coughs> is all about how many ways can this happen and how many ways can this happen, comparing them. Right? All right, so this is true. I went to buy a new iPhone. My old one is all cracked and slow and old. So I can get the 16 it is up today. 16 <laughs> megabyte, 32 or 64. Okay, uh, the front can be white or black. The back can be any of these colors. How many possibilities are there for buying an iPod? So we can just go ahead and uh, figure it out. So there's six, and there's six on each one of these branches. So we have three times two times six equals 36 different possible iPods that we could buy. That's a lot. Fundamental counting principle. Make sense? Any questions? Okay. I have a feeling that most of you have been exposed to this. Yeah, fundamental counting is a little bit more. Just multiply the possibilities together. Okay, so now we come to permutation. Permutations. A permutation is, say you have the letters A, B, and C. A, a permutation is a unique way to order them. Okay, so we're putting stuff in a line. The word line is important. Line to me implies an order, right? 
there's a first place and a second place and a third place essentially. Okay. So A, B, and C is different from C, B, A, is different from A, C, B, is different from B, C, A, is different from B, A, C, is different from all those different possibilities. Real briefly, how many ways are there to arrange the letters A, B, and C? What do you think? You can Three. use the Nine. fundamental counting principle to refute that. Nine? Nine? Nine. You can list them all. <laughs> it can take a while. Can you can forget what you say. Wait, there's definitely more than nine. More than nine. Mm. I don't think so. How do you come up with nine? Just three times three? Yeah. Because there's three letters and then just multiply by itself for some reason? Yeah. For some reason? <laughs> for some well, reason. If you put A at the beginning, then yeah. there's two different ways. Two different ways to what? To with to have A at the beginning. And then so it'd be like either A B C or A C B. And then if you put B at the beginning, there's B A C or B C A. Uh -huh. And then if you put C at the beginning, there's C A B or C B A. Uh -huh. So there's two ways for each for letter. Each of front. the three letters. Yeah, so that would be six. Six. Not six. Nine. So here's a way to do the same thing you said. Because <coughs> if you have more letters, then, then it becomes harder. a chore yeah. at four. So uh, let's say but we want to view these things, to use the fundamental counting principle, we want to view these things as events happening in, in sequence. Okay, so event A is, I put the letter that's in front. I pick a letter to be in the front, right? So using these dashes is pretty complicated. So I put the first letter here. How many ways is it to pick the first letter? Yeah. What? How many ways is it to pick the first letter? Three. Three, you got A, B, or C. Nothing has been used yet. They're all free to be placed in the front, okay? How many ways is it to place the next one? Two, because you used A or B or C, whatever one you use, you can't use it again, so there's only two left. Oh, there's only one. There's only one way for the last one. So event A is three different ways, event B is two different ways, event C is one way for a total of six. So you basically just go down the line like that, so there are four letters, then it'd be four, three, two, one. Right. If you have a set number of things and you're using all of them, okay, so now there's instances where you have 20 things, you only want to use five at a time. But we'll start where we use all of them. All three letters, or we all use all three people, or all three whatever, all five, all seven, all 20, 6,000 whatevers. Okay. <coughs> so if there are three people, uh, they're, they're selected to be on a committee. This committee has three positions, president, vice president, secretary. How many ways are there for these people, these three people, to be president, vice president, and secretary? Six different ways, right? There's, we can put, it doesn't even, it's not that like we have to put the most important one first, or the most important one, we can have secretary be here, and then we'll pick a president, and then we'll pick a vice president. It doesn't matter, like, the order that matters is not that, like, this order, but the order in which you place them. So for the order to be important, you have to apply some kind of order and then start filling them in order. Okay? Once you do that, then all the possible combinations, all the possible actually permutations have been achieved. Permutations is the right word. Combinations actually is a completely different meaning. And permutations is order. Order is order. Okay? So let's call these people Al, Barb. So, how many ways, of course, we can, it's exactly what we were talking about. <coughs> yeah. okay. A first, B first, B first, or C first, that's three possibilities for secretary. Once secretary's been filled, then president, there's president's next, and so there's two ways, and there's one way, you multiply it all together, six ways. Okay. So, you said, um, does it always step down like? Does. If you have four people or four things, four whatevers, and four things, like four positions for them to, to be put in, then yeah, it always does that. Okay? So now we understand what factorial is. Let me show you. Uh, 
when you are, here's a new word, permuting, okay, that means finding all the permutations, arranging them in different orders, uh, all n things, okay. This letter n we use a lot when we're talking, we've already used it when we did the uh, sequences and series, right? n is like the total number of things, okay. Here n is three, there's three total people, they're being arranged into, it just happens to be three different offices. Okay. When you're arranging all n of them, uh, then um, the number of permutations is n factorial. So can anybody gather? So that means n times Conditionals or whatever? N times. The position. The, the number of positions? It's not times the number of positions, no. The number of positions and the number of things in this case are, are both the same. Three oh, people, three positions. So if this number were five, what would five factorial mean? Five times four times three. Right, five factorial equals five, four times three times two times one. What does seven factorial mean? Five, seven, five, seven. six, times five, there's four. So what would n factorial be? What would n get multiplied by? N minus one. N minus one, right? Well, one less yeah. than n. So we put that little parentheses that stands for <coughs> numbers less than one, one less than, or one n less than n, excuse me, times what? N minus two. N minus two, all the way down to? So n, 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 n minus. Where do we stop? Doesn't matter. No, it matter. N minus. Well, n minus one. Don't we stop? Don't we don't want to stop at the same number? Like we can actually just say what number we stop at. N minus n plus one. One. N minus n plus one would be negative one. You stop at one. Yeah, you stop at one, right? Go all the way down, always, all the way down to three, <coughs> two, one. Always down to the very end. So n factorial means n times every number that comes. Factorial, five factorial, multiply by every number. Raised to, to zero power. Say what? N raised to zero power. To N zero. N zero. Because then N anything times anything else. Uh, raised to the zero is one. What? Are you just confused about your question? Really? Like, yeah, just like you know. isn't, okay. like five raised to the zero power is one. Yes. Five to the zero power is one. So it'd be n, n raised to the zero power would be one, right? And to the zero power would be one, yes. So since it's like n you should I say like what you take it down to? Yeah. It'd yeah. be like n to the zero. Well, I guess if we were to do it that way, we would go down to uh, it would be n times n minus one times n minus two times n minus uh, n minus one times n minus uh, two. Yeah. Well, actually, that's where we would stop. n minus n minus one. It's kind of. I think. I think it's definitely easier to say you go down three to three to two to one. You know, because um, those are the actual numbers. To to write one in terms of n is kind of. So there, we just like, write it in a way that cancels out n and leaves us with one. So if I distribute this negative, I get negative n and positive one. n minus n is zero, and I get a positive one. So I'll just take it all the way down to three, two, one. That's how it works. So that's factorial. When you see factorial, that's all it means. Five factorial, five times everything before it, five times factorial, five times everything. Let's see how big this gets. Can, can you guys uh, get your calculators out? I'll show you uh, the calculator here. It's also going to show you where to find factorial. Because, I mean, this is a faster way than just counting everything out, of course, but even doing this can get to be a really laborious process.
here's what I want to do first of all. I want somebody to make up a problem. Uh, see how well this works. So you make up a good or, or bad sounding problem like I did with the, the people in the three positions. Let's do it with something other than three and uh, make it so that it would come out to be, you know, the answer would be whatever factorial. Does that make sense? Like I said, there's three people, and there's president, secretary, and vice president. So how many ways are there to fill those positions? So you make up another one that uses a number bigger than three. Uh, it's like, there's this many things, and this many positions, and so the answer is whatever factorial. Hmm. Does the number of positions have to be the same as the number of options? In this case, yes. Okay, so. Five taco bell sizes and five squats. Five tacos. <laughs> okay. Five tacos. Five, five flavors, maybe. <laughs> so five. Five what? Like different flavored taco sauces. Okay, five. Five tacos a day. Taco sauces. What taco sauces? <laughs> oh, that's a five. My bad. It says taco <laughs> sauces. <laughs> okay. Let's fix it. I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna learn how to write my fives. Five. <laughs> taco <laughs> sauces. Taco. taco. That should be a secret. There you go. Five taco sauces. Oh, I recognize it. Five tacos. Okay. So you have five different taco sauces, five different uh, uh, tacos to put them on. So you can line up your tacos, right? Um, first, second, third, fourth. Fifth taco, and then you choose a taco sauce to be in the first taco, the second taco, the third taco. Okay, and the answer comes out to be five factorial, right? Yeah. Easy enough to do by hand. Right? Five times four, twenty times three, sixty times two, one twenty. Right? Just come out to be one twenty. So let's check and make sure our calculators aren't broken. <laughs> five. Okay, and here's where we find factorial. You ready? You gonna remember this first time? Yeah. Probably not. I don't even remember. Let's see. Uh, I think it's in. Stat. Count. No, no, no. Don't do that. No, it's math. Math? It's math. math. So we press the math button. Just push math. Shouldn't that be just the only button? It's just, yeah, it's only math. Just a big. <laughs> just press it and it does whatever you want. And there's it. your factorial right there. You move over to PRB. Uh, Probability is what that stands for. Oh, okay. I was like, it's not here. With the arrow keys here, the left right arrow keys. Where And you press enter. Oh, I found it. Shush. It works. All right. Now, uh, how much bigger do you think six factorial would be? Like a lot bigger, not that much bigger? I think kind of a lot. Probably a lot bigger. How, how many times bigger than this will it be? I mean, there's an exact number. Five six times? Six times bigger, right? Six factorial is really five factorial times six. Seven twenty. Seven twenty. Okay, so how fast do you think this function x factorial grows? Fast, slow? Yeah, I was about to ask. Well, only exponential functions grow exponentially. Well, if it goes from like seven times from five to six, probably pretty fast. So, yeah, the next one will be seven times bigger than that, and eight times bigger than that. So, pretty fast. Uh, so, what do you think the limit is on this? Like, if we go 10 factorial, um, no, it's math. Over to PRB, down to there, and then hit enter. That's very, very big. It's in the millions, right? From 6 to 10, we've, we've gone from hundreds to millions. Really, really quickly. So, I want you, I mean, eventually you're, you're, you can break your calculator. So, I want you to break your calculator, find the number where it breaks. Yes. Uh, ten. Too high. Hundred. I got me hundred. So you gotta find the number. Uh -huh. What about ninety-nine? Does that break it too? I'll check. It's it says overflow, which e is really kind of funny. That's not broken. Broken is error. It'll okay. say overflow. Overflow. Yes, it's overflow. I got ninety-nine. Well, I got ninety-nine. Says overflow. Okay, well, let's dial it back a bit. I'm gonna try eighty to see if we can. 80 is still overflows. Probably too big, okay. I mean, 80 is not that big a number, but you put factorial behind it and it's way too big to calculate I'll check 70. This thing can go to 99 decimal places. Okay, so 80 factorial is 70 down to 99. 70 is too big? Yeah, I'll try 60. 65, 60. 65 
Is good? 65 yeah. works. 65 is good. Okay, so try 60. Like, I'll try 60. 69 works. Oh, so it's it works? 70? Yeah. So 70 is the breaking point. Yeah. So you go all to 69 factorial, but 70 factorial is too, too big. It's crazy. Let's show it. Or alt C. That's 70. that was an exercise in getting you used to where is factorial so that you don't forget. And also to show you how powerful the factorial function is. It's crazy. We can actually use our calculators to see which is bigger. Is it exponential bigger or is factorial bigger? Let's see. So an exponential function would be like 2 to the x or 4 to the x or 75 to the x, whatever. Okay? Each number is twice as big as it was before. And 2, uh, or sorry, x Factorial will be the other. Definitely go over the next factorial. You think so? Uh -huh. I am pretty sure. So we can just look at the graph and see which one gets bigger. Faster. Where is the other one? Is it going to be Y? Huh? Is it straight Y axis? Okay, let's talk about. Oh, no. Uh, like right here, what what number is is that? One point five. One point five. Do you think this is a one point five factorial? No. No. We're gonna do like one point five times point five. One point five times one. So. Uh, oh, so it's probably like over five. Um. Well, it only has outputs for one, two, three, four, five, right? Integers, positive integers. Uh, we could use a table though. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 63. Let's see which one's, which one's bigger. This is 9.2 times 10 to the 18th power. This is 2 times e to the 87th power. Which is bigger? 2 times e? 2 times 10 to the e. 2 times 10 to the 87th power. 2 times 10 to the 87th power. Much, much bigger. Um, we did like uh, 8 to the x. Uh, well, if we do 8 to the x, we only get to, when we put in 63, that's 8 to the 63rd power. That's only 7.8 to the times 10 to the 56th power. And obviously, this is still 2 times e, or times 10 to the 87th power, still bigger. And even if we got a number, like say we put in 17, right? 17 to the 63. Maybe that's bigger than 2 times 10 to the 87th. But then just go a little bit further down the road to another number that's bigger than 17, or bigger, sorry, big, bigger than 63, and the factorial will be bigger. All right? Sounds good? So, so factorial is what we, we call a discrete function where you can only put in discrete numbers, meaning in math, discrete means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nothing between 1, 2, and 3, and 4. Okay. Yes. So we got factorial down. Yeah? We got factorial yes. down. All right. Now, we're going to talk about permutations now of smaller sets. You got n things, but you're only going to arrange r of them. That's why there's n and r in that original thing. So that would be like if you had five taco sauces, but only two tacos? Um, yes. And then we went, we're only going to use two of these sauces. So, I mean, you made it up. Let's talk about that. Five taco sauces. Um, Okay, so you got your two tacos. How many ways are there to arrange the, to choose two from the five? Ten. Ten? How'd you get there? Two times five. <coughs> two, two times ten. Two times five. Two times five? You got the first taco is going to get one of the five, and your second taco is going to get one of the remaining four, and then you're just going to stop. Two. Right? Um, so yeah, there's, there's, wait, ten? Maybe twenty. Maybe twenty. Twenty different. Common mistake is five times two. Yeah. Wait, 
You're not gonna have yeah. So the bread makes more sense. Ten would mean I'm gonna pick one of the sauces and one of the tacos, uh, and just like hold them in my hand, right? <laughs> but I'm gonna choose to try to like take two tacos and choose one of five and then one of the remaining four. I have two tacos instead of a sauce and a, and a taco. Okay. Um, that would be like how many total tacos are possible, right? But this is like how many total two tacos are possible. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So like using the same sauce on both tacos? No. Using a different sauce has both tacos. Okay. Can't you, you, you used it. It's all empty now. You can't use it again. Um, all right. Now it, it is possible to just do it this way. But what about, um, let's just keep going with this example. Um, we'll be able to know what we're supposed to calculate, but it's going to be the numbers that are so big, it's going to be really um, not easy to manage, so we're going to develop this formula. Let's say we have um, 300 sauces, okay, and 35 tacos. what we're supposed to do, <coughs> excuse me, well, like how, how would you, taking your cue from this problem, well, you do it, 30, 299, 300, 299, 298, 298 and so on, okay, and then you do it 35 times, and you do it 35 times, okay, so we'll put a dot, 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 it's going to be the 35th one, okay, so this is going to be 300, okay, this is going to be 299, this is going to be 298, Seven. Isn't it down to like two sixty five? Okay, so this is a. How did you get that? Subtracted thirty five from three hundred. You subtracted thirty five from three hundred. Well. Get down to the number two sixty five. Yeah. Because if you have thirty five, then it's going down by one each time. Um, so this is a bit tricky, because it would seem like it would make sense to just subtract 35. Um, but really what you're saying is two, what did you say, two what? 265 plus another 35, right? Would get you to 300, okay? So if this is 35, Things. This is the 35 you would add on to get to 300, right? So that actually means that 265 would be like this number right here that you don't use, and 266 would be numbers 1 through 35 that you would add to get to 300. Oh. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It would be 300 minus 35 plus 1. Minus 35 minus, or so, so 300. Minus 35 plus 1, like that. Yeah. yeah. So that's how it would work out. All right. But even now that we know that, what would it take for us to like, enter this into our calculators? Quite a while. Quite a while. And to go 300, multiply. 299, multiply. 298, multiply. And so on, and so on, and so on. Okay? <laughs> right. To multiply all of these together, right, would be the same as to get rid of all of the ones that come after. Okay, let me show you what I mean. 300 times 299 times 298 times blah, 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 all the way down to 3, 2, 1. Actually, let me take it, let me, let me write what's in the middle there. What we want is all the way down to 266, to 266, and then all the way down to 3, 2, 1. What is all of this equal to? 
Don't give me a number, just give me like, uh, like this, is uh, this, three, this is 300 factorial, right? So if I start with 300 factorial, part of that is actually the number that I want, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, what I want to do is get rid of the 265 all the way down to 321, right? Well, what is 265 all the way down to 321? What? 265 factorial. 265 factorial. So if I take this and divide by 265 factorial, 265 will cancel the 265, 264, 264, 263, 263. All those factors will cancel each other out. That stuff has all the same factors as that. So you basically have 35 factorial, right? No. No. No, that would be if I have 35 sauces and 35 tacos. Oh, I see. Right? Yeah. 100 sauces and 35 tacos. And so it's it's 35 numbers starting at 300 and counting down from there. That is a lot of work. But now this becomes 300 factorial over n minus r. N, uh, right, at the beginning we talked about n minus r, right, over uh, 265 factorial. Or in general, For, um, for all R, no, all permutations of R out of N, uh, let's just call it things. Oh. A better word than things. That would be N P R. That's how we. That's what that means. Okay. It also means national public radio, but it <laughs> means all the permutations of R out of N things. So N is always the total. R is the subset. We could call it the subset of those things. Okay. So what we just found was 300 P 35, or at least what we wrote the expression for. So if you try to do that in your calculators, it breaks again. Yeah. Okay. Um, but. That example is would be three hundred p sixty or thirty five, excuse me, and that is equal to n factorial. That would be the permutations of all of the n things over n minus r factorial, which is just canceling out all of the last bit that we don't want. We want like this upper bit, this up, upper thirty five, when we get rid of the last two hundred and sixty five of those things. Cancel out all those factors. So let me write uh, 7P4. And you write like a word problem for it. What would that, what could that mean? What could be, what could that be the answer to? Having ice cream for four different cones. Four different cones for, uh, yeah, four different types of cones? Yeah, like, like waffles. Okay. That could sound a little bit confusing because we could say, somebody might think that's just 28 because I can pick a cone and then I can so how about four of the same cone? Uh, yeah, you, there, there's seven flavors, and you want to pick, let's say you want to pick four of them to put on a single cone. Okay, so you've got to so, go four oh, scoops. Okay, yeah. Four. yeah, you're going to put four scoops on one cone four for scoops. yourself. You know, how many different ways. And, and the order's important, meaning if I have chocolate and vanilla, it's different from having vanilla than chocolate. That's important. Okay. You care about that for some reason. There's... <laughs> <laughs> Because you want the you want it to be a full experience, right? And you want the chocolate first, then the vanilla. And some other guy wants something else, okay? So seven flavors, four scoops. How many different ice cream cones are possible? Well, seven P four would be the answer to that. Because we know, like, if we were to uh, just put ice cream on this thing. I think I can no, fill this. Oh, oh my gosh. Snap. Okay, and then what? <laughs> can just put that there and uh, make it hang I have this. It won't let me oh, no. What about if I... Oh, that works. 
Okay, so then, again, uh, I'm not going to be having too much fun with this. It's just taking a lot longer than necessary. Oh, it's, it's great. Uh, strawberry? Okay, we got a sherbet going on. Sherbet? Or a <laughs> sherbet. And then. Uh, one more. One more. A pistachio. Pistachio. Yeah, that looks like a good solid <laughs> ice cream cone. All right, so. Now, the truth about this is that there are uh, three other flavors that aren't even pictured here, right? Yeah. Uh, and we can look at it as, this is my first flavor, and it can be any of the seven, this can be any of the six remaining, five remaining, four remaining, right? Seven times six times five times four. It's a simple one. But we do want to get used to this formula because when the numbers are unmanageable, we need a formula to do the heavy lifting. So the formula would look like what on this side? Uh, seven factorial. Factorial. factorial thank you. Divided by seven minus four factorial. Okay, and seven minus four is three. 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 Right. Three. See, you can see the the uh, three, two, one. Yeah. They got canceled out, right, by that no, want three factorial. Does it make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got rid of all those. We, we're not including those. We're not making a seven scoop ice cream cone. We're making a four scoop ice cream cone. We all uh, moderation. <laughs> and then that's 400. <laughs> What's that? That's, four, that's 840 choices. Thank you. 840 choices. That's a lot of choices of ice cream. That's <laughs> a lot. It doesn't seem like it was seven and like four. Yeah. Yeah, those numbers aren't that four big. But it's 840 different. The total permutations is yeah, just way out there. Okay. Let's do a couple more permutations. permutations. Okay. So what we're doing here with permutations is a, a little more than just putting a bunch of stuff in a line. We're putting some stuff, some of the stuff, like four of the seven things. Okay. Remember, order is important. So there are 30 runners in a race. How many ways are there for three people to come in first, second, and third? Right. So there's your order, first, second, third. It's different. If, if Joe finishes first and Susie finishes second, they're not going to be very happy if you just, well, Susie might, but you're not, they're not going to be happy if you just switch them arbitrarily. Oh, Susie came in first. Whatever her name I said came in second. <laughs> so is it like 30 factorial over 27 factorial? 30 factorial over 27 factorial, yeah. Okay. Because, let's just write that, over 27 factorial. Because what we're taking is 30 times 29 times 28 27 26 all the way down to 3, 2, 1. All we want is this stuff, right? So those three. Yeah. 30 for first, 29 for second, 28 for third. We want to cancel out all this stuff. Well, what is that? That's just 27 factorial. So we cancel it out. And how many is that? Uh, 24,360. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. Jesus Christ. Um, how about if we do it with uh, six? Runners and three positions, three per second, third. So how about just six runners? Wait, not thirty runners? Not thirty. Change it to six. six. Just change thirty to six. Everything else the same. So two factorial over six. No, it doesn't work that way. When you say a factorial over a factorial, it doesn't cancel out like all this stuff and leave a factorial, right? Factorial goes from one up to the number. But what we cancel out is all this bottom stuff and we keep the top stuff, right? Top three, the top four, the top five. 120. 120. So we got, uh, if we change this to six, uh, then we get six P, what, three. three is six factorial over two, two factorial? Oh, no. No, three, no, three factorial, three. sorry. Three yeah. factorial. Three. Which is six times five times four, which is 120, you said? Yeah. Okay. Um, now in a typical horse race, there's six horses. Uh, there's this thing called the, uh, I think it's called the trifecta, where you bet on the top three horses. So what is, what's the probability you'll bet on the trifecta correctly? One. One in 120. <laughs> Those odds aren't very good. They're not. Uh, if you choose them randomly. Even if you know something about horses and how they do in different conditions, it's still not very good. So like stuff like this is not as Pretty practical thing. People really want to know. 
I think probably the most common math question beyond simple arithmetic is what are the odds? People always want to know what are the odds? And a lot of times those things are, you can calculate them. Calculate a whole, I guess. Now, there's a well, there's a little more. Is that? It's uh, that's the more. Oh, okay. We're only putting some of this stuff together. Right? The more is this formula. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay, I think I have one more. Yeah? So there's 12 people to choose from, there's four positions to be filled, president, vice president, treasurer, secretary. How many ways can four of these 12 people be selected to fill the four positions? So on your own, just make sure everybody individually is good to go and uh, I'll come look at your worst. All right, so we've got 12 people to choose from. We see that order is important here. That's gonna be a key thing for you to be able to parse this out. What do I use? Do I use NPR or NCR? That's what you're gonna be asking yourself soon enough. We're going to use P because order is important. Because if you switch the president and the secretary, that's a completely different thing. <coughs> There's a completely different permutation, completely different ordering, completely different list. Okay? And we're taking 4 out of there, so we get 12 factorial, or 12 minus 4 factorial. That's 12 factorial over 8 factorial. Is 11,880. 11,880 will be the end result. And what that means is 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times da, 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 3, 2, 1 over 8. Factorial, well, all of this is a factorial. It's going to cancel out 8 factorial. We're left with that. Okay. No need to break it down like that. I don't need to, to write that every time and then multiply 12 times 11 times 10 times 9. You can use your calculator to do 12 factorial over 8 factorial. But, uh, just want to make it clear what exactly is happening. Okay, so now we're in combinations. Combinations are different from permutations. Combinations, we say, order is not important. And if you're anything like me, remembering order is important or not important, can, there's a tendency for people to get these two things confused. But order is not important, so I interpret that this way. So if it's not important, then they can be in any order. So then ABC, PCA, right, those are different things. Like it can be confusing, okay? But when we say order is not important, it means no matter what order the three things are in, it doesn't matter. They're the same, and I crossed out line and wrote group, okay? We're putting things not in order, not on the line, but just in a group, just a bunch of people, a bunch of things, a bunch of bowling balls or cups of yogurt, whatever they might be for some reason, okay? And in this instance, A, B, C, is the same as CBA and ACB, okay? So here is a question that's almost a trick question. If I take the letters ABC and I say how many different ways, well, if I ask you how many different permutations there are of ABC, we already have done that, right? How many different permutations are there? Six, three times two times one, three factorial. How many combinations are there of the letters ABC? What? How many different combinations are there of A, B, and C, the letters ABC? Six. Nope. Three. Nope. Nine. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what? She has to go back to nine. We're giving you letters A, B, oh, and C. Oh, one. Yes. Oh. Oh. Just one. Oh, because they're all the same. I was going to give it to Tristan. Oh, Tristan guessed it too, and I was like, no, not right. <laughs> no, what? Nine. <laughs> if you have three things, there's only one way to have those three things when we talk about combinations. They just exist the in the same space and time. They are the they are a group of things. Okay. Um, so this happens um, when you go out to uh, there's a there's a, a league a club that uh, plays on Blue Mountain and Patty Canyon every Thursday night during the are summer. You in that club? Probably not this year. <laughs> last year, last two years I was. It, it's a fun time, and I recommend you go out there and do that if you like disc golf. Um, <laughs> So, see there's five people, there's usually a lot more than five people that come uh, to a given Thursday, and you choose people to be in a group together. Okay, sometimes that's random, sometimes it's uh, on purpose. Um, but say there's five people, and you want to choose, uh, what, three of them to be in a flight. Flight is just what you call a group of people who go through the course together, so that's a flight. So how many different ways are there to get these three people? Now here's what's different, there's no order. There's not a first, second, and a third person in a group. They're just three people of 
you know, it doesn't matter what the skill level is. Once you just pick three people, then you can mix them up their orders too. So that's like a whole other thing. You think that makes more possibilities? Yeah. So hang on. Hold on. It's a lot to think about, but okay. Wait, hold on now, hold on. <laughs> You're getting it backwards like I did when I was learning about this. Once you have the three people, you can't put them in different orders. That's what we just got done doing. They're That's already permutation. In a group? Huh? Oh. They're, already in a group. they're already in a group. Once the three people are in a group, to put them in all the different orders that they can go in would be too much. Okay? So just the three people. Okay? So between permutations and combinations, are there more permutations or combinations? Permutations. More permutations because you can take those three things and then scramble them up. And then that's different. But if you scramble them, they're still the same. They're the same. If I take uh, Phil, Bob, <laughs> and, and Susanna. So it doesn't matter what position. Right. It's just so they're just there. Them up, it's still the same people. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's what That's why it's a lot. Yeah. 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 The thing that, that you need to think about is is order important? Like even in this ice cream problem, we could, we could think of it in either way. It kind of just depends on the person's preference. Does it matter that I eat mint first and then orange next? It's, well, absolutely it does. Or, <laughs> or it doesn't. Just as long as I get those four flavors in me, that's all it that matters. Okay? It doesn't matter what order they come in. If you go to, you know, if you go to uh, Use World, you don't stack the flavors. Well, maybe you stack the flavors. But if you put them right next to each other, that'd be a combination, oh, right? If you go to U-Swirl and you put them right next to each other, that's a combination because there's no order there. I can just scoop them all up at once or whatever I want. But if I stack them, then that would be a, a permutation, right? That would be different. I, eat, I have to eat through one to get to the next one. That's an order. Not necessarily. Okay, Reese, not everyone <laughs> takes two scoop bites. Okay. But you see the difference, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that order can be a preference. Sometimes it can be very clear. There are names for President, Vice President, Secretary. Sure. So clearly, there's an order. Like everyone's in the same position. It's just a group. It's yeah. A group so a really common word for this is committee. In math, we like to use the word committee. So if you have a committee and you don't have any names for those positions, well, a committee is another word for a group of people that just have the same authority and their votes count for the same and all that kind of stuff. Nobody has any power over anybody else. So that word committee is really popular. So when you read committee. Don't think it necessarily means combinations, but it's a really popular word. And just the word committee means generally it doesn't matter. But you'll notice I use the word committee, right? Selected to be on a committee, and I said that there are positions in this committee. Oh, okay? gosh. But sometimes it's not positions. Sometimes. So you have to you have pull to that meaning out of it. If it's there, then it's there. If it's not, then it's not. So here we go. Um, first, let's count them the old way, like order matters. And we'll get rid of that order. All right? So let's count them the old way. How would that go? We've got five people, put three of them on a flight. How does that look? Two, two, it would be a permutation. It would be, yeah, we'll go through the permutation way. And then, so we'll count the order, which is permutations, and then we'll eliminate the order. Like five, uh, five. Five. Yeah. Factorial. Yeah. Uh, three? three? No, two. Or two. 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 Factorial. Factorial. Okay. Are those numbers good enough? Should we make the numbers bigger, a little more interesting? Or is that? Yeah, we could double it. Okay, 10, 10 and 4. four. Okay, so, so instead we'll have 10 people show up and, uh, four. and four, where did 4 go? That's by select. Where did you go? There it is, 4. Okay, so we'll double it. So wouldn't that have to be a. Um, well, we're not saying that we would have to end up with two factorial numbers in the We just want to change the numbers up. Right? I think it would be. Um, so that would be 10 factorial over, um, we'll subtract 4, so 6 factorial, right? Yeah. So that part says, how many ways can I pick 4 people and, you know, arrange them in all these different orders? It looks like this. 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. Those are the only ones I care about. So I use this factorial to cancel out all of the ones I don't care about. That's 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. One. So the old way, permutations would use this 6 factorial to cancel out all of these factors I don't care about. Okay? So far, so good? Mm -hmm. What have we counted so far? Let's put it to words. Start off with uh, how many? We've counted how many what? 
right now so far? How many different possibilities there are in a permutation? Permutations. In a, in a permutation situation, so say you pick them for a flight and, and, uh, and somebody goes first, somebody goes second, somebody goes third, somebody goes fourth, right? So how many other ways are there to just start that round? After that, it depends on who gets the best score, and then the person who gets the best score goes first. Okay, so how many different ways are there for the for you to pick uh, four out of the ten, and for them to go in a certain order? Okay, but now we're just we just want a group of people. We just want to say these four people are playing together. So the issue here is once we found those four people, and we put them in order, uh, or we found the four people, we arrange them in all the different ways that you can arrange four people. Now, how many ways can you arrange four people? You have four people, and you order them all the different ways you can order them. How many different ways are there? You have to use something we learned today to figure that out. Twenty-four. Or How'd you get that? Four things. Four things. Three. Four factorial is how many ways you can order four things, right? So say I take, like, imagine that that what I've outlined here represents four people, right? Just four people. Right? So the permutations count. They 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 basically section out four people: Bob, Susanna, Jay, and Francisco. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> also, it also counts all the different ways that the Francisco and all those other few people can be put in order. We don't care about that order, right? So once you take those four people, how many different ways are you counting them in permutations? How many different ways are you counting them? Each group of four people. Four times. Four? Not four times. Actually, 24 times. Oh, right? Four factorial. Because it's yeah. who gets chosen first, second, third. Right. So it's counting them in a first, second, third, fourth kind of a way. We don't want to count them that way. We're, we're counting too much, right? Too much. Every group that permeate this permutative, think of it as like a person or a computer. Every, every group that permutations makes, it counts that group 24 times, right? Does that make sense? Four factorial times. So our number is 24 times bigger than it should be, right? Because it gets a group of four, counts it 24 times, discards that group, Starts with another group, gets a new group of four, counts it 24 times, gets rid of that group, gets another group of four, counts it, and orders it, and then. So we're going to divide by how much? 24, or four factorial, the number of ways you can order those four things. And then that's the combination? This number now, when we divide by four factorial, is the number of combinations. So that is a very big number. How? Well, it's smaller than this number, but it's still probably pretty big. And uh, if we wanted to, we could like, because this is four times three times two times one, we could see if we could just do this by hand. Uh, four can cancel with eight, leaving a two, which can cancel with that two. This three can cancel with this three, leaving three. Down here we have one. Yeah. And we have 10 times three is 30, uh, times seven is 210. That's not that big. How big is, uh, so this should be four factor. How big is uh, 10P four? Five. 5,040? So we went from 5,040 to 210. So that's quite a bit less. When you disregard order and you say order's not important, I just care how many unique groups there are. It takes it out by, well, sometimes by a lot. By a lot. Okay. I should do another one. It's gone. I thought I had another one. <laughs> Turns out I don't. Okay. What? So let's make up another one. Uh, <laughs> so let's invent a combination of problems. Okay. Uh, the <laughs> or just start it. Somebody else can finish it. Fifteen. There are fifteen. Red. Why, why are you obsessed with firefoxes? Fire firefoxes. Oh, firefoxes. Firefoxes. Fire That's a red pandas are called, right? Are they really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know. They're called firefoxes. So that's what that little thing is? That's what, that's not like the, it looks like an internet thing. That's an, oh my god, it's a red panda. <laughs> it's also a movie. Oh, I thought it was a fox too. A um, firefox? Yeah, it's a panda. A red one. What? That looks like a fox. The Billy Zoo has a red panda. Oh, she 
The red panda. The red panda. Zoo. Zoo's is part of the puzzle. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. We'll still get. That would, but that, that was like, how would that work? I wouldn't Okay, well, maybe one zoo that only has room for. Two zoo that only has room for three. For three of them? For three, five. Let's go a little bigger. Five! For five. Eight. Okay. Firefoxes. Only room. <laughs> well, what about the rest of them? Four. They die. Five. They get hit by a train. Of them. I'm not stealing. Okay, their habitat that maybe laws they dictate how, how many square feet each red panda must have. Yeah. So they can only take five of them? Yeah. They don't care. Who's first, second, third, fourth, fifth? They just want some pandas. They just want some pandas. Okay? <laughs> They're not trying to breed these things. <laughs> they get all males, they get all females, whatever, it doesn't matter. I don't know about Firefox, I don't know if that actually is true, but let's just say. <laughs> okay, so we want to just pick five of them. So let's start with the 15 factorial. Let's talk about each piece of it. What would 15 factorial count? Uh, 15 times 14 times 15. But in the context of the problem, what would it be counting? Um, uh, to how many different ways <coughs> yeah. you could, like, like if you have, like, five pandas already, yeah. then, like, put them in order. Yeah. All 15 of them. Yeah. So 15 factorials, how many ways we can put all 15 of us in a row, somehow, with some order, right, to line up for lunch? I don't know. Okay, those are the red pandas are my favorite for them. So now in general, if there are, um, instead of 15, there are N Firefoxes, and there's only room for R of them, what we're talking about there is N C R, and we have then N factorial over N minus R factorial, just like combinations, but then we also divide by R factorial to get rid of the, the order. number of ways. Permute these R things. Okay. This is work out weird in that problem because I had five and fifteen and fifteen factorial. No, 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 you can't do that. Oh, you're multiplying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Makes sense. Let's talk about factorials because they get combined in funny ways. They actually don't combine very well at all. <laughs> okay. Like two x plus three x is five x and yeah. all that kind of stuff, but. We should talk about that. Like 5 factorial plus 3 factorial is not 8 factorial. Okay? Because it's not 5 times an exclamation mark. Oh, it's true. It's 5 times 4 times 3. Right. Times two. So 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. So, and, 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 and think about it. Factorial is a multiplication function, right? It's, it works primarily in multiplication. When you throw addition in there, that's, what does that do? That doesn't really help you. But also, maybe as confusingly, 10 factorial times 5 factorial is not 50 factorial. Think about how much bigger 50 factorial is. We did it in our calculators, right? 10 factorial, sure it's big. But how much bigger is 50 factorial? Way bigger. It's 
got to be a lot bigger than just uh, what? Big. How big is this? 120? Yeah. yeah. 120 times bigger. It's definitely bigger than 120 times bigger. Right. Just take uh, 50 times 49. That's just the first two numbers in 50 factorial. That's already bigger than 120. <laughs> right? It's already bigger than 120. And yeah, you see where I'm going. Okay. Factorials do not combine very well. They only kind of work together in division, but they don't really like. Like uh, 10 factorial over 5 factorial is not 2 factorial. It's not 5 factorial. Like these 5 don't cancel these 5 and these 5. Like they just don't work that way. You don't take factorials and just slap them together and it becomes some new factorial. Because they mean something so unique and different from anything we've ever used before. You gotta think about what you're trying to do when you try to combine them and see them together. Alright? So. What? Everything we taught you in math class, go ahead and forget for this lesson. Oh. This thing was like two different numbers. If you have been paying close attention, all the rules still apply and they're consistent. <laughs> Which I'm sure you have. Okay. So when we take a like a 15 factorial over a 10 factorial, 5 factorial, we, we could take 5 factorial and cancel the last 5 of this, right? This is 15 times 14. It's 13 times, uh, I'm going to go all the way down to 4 positions, so 12 times 11 times. And da, 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 three, five, say four, three, two, one. I am going to ask you to do a couple of these by hand, like on a test or whatever, fairly small numbers. But we have the choice that we could cancel five factorial and five factorial, right? We could cancel 10 factorial and 10 factorial, right? It gets rid of a lot of stuff. We're going to do that by hand. So cancel out those last 10 factors. And then, you know, you can work on this. You could, uh, there's definitely a factor of five there. We got five times four times three is two times one. We got a factor of five there and there. Three, so that cancels that three. Uh, four uh, and, and 12. Uh, that's the three there. And uh, two and three, 14 there, seven. Okay, so we cancel out everything down there. And when you think about, wouldn't it have to cancel everything in the denominator? Yeah. Because yeah. what we're counting is like, a discrete number of things. There's definitely a, a finite number of ways to take five out of 15 fireboxes. There's not a fraction of ways. Like You don't end up with fourths, <laughs> right? So it's definitely gonna cancel everything in the denominator if you're doing this by hand. Okay, so everything's gonna be canceled off. And then we have, what we got, uh, seven times 13 times three times 11. Whatever that is. Yeah. It's, it's whatever we found for 15 factorial over five factorial. And just one more thing, careful, if you enter this into your calculator, um, 15 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 10 factorial. Okay, how do you think that's going to wind up? Probably pretty bad. Why? Because it's going to multiply this by What is it? Or it's going to go the other way. It's going to divide first. It's going to 15 factorial with five, minus 5, or divided by 5 factorial. Then it's going to multiply that result by 10 factorial. Basically moving the 10 factorial up into the numerator with the 15 factorial. So you make sure to do what? Parentheses. Parentheses. Now the denominator is 5 factorial times 10 factorial. 2003 ways to figure out. 
the first two sections of the, of the chapter are like, hey, this is fun. Then you do the homework. <laughs> then you come back and there's more. And you're like, and uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's just like, like, this wasn't it? All right. just a test on let's, let's just do like a really common type of problem. I was reminded looking at this section here. A really common thing is picking cards out of a deck. So you really need to be familiar with the deck of cards. If you're not, in the first page of 10.2, it lists all the cards that you can have. Okay. And you, well, let me just explain it really quickly for anybody who's unfamiliar. You got a deck of cards, 52 cards. What are those 52 cards made of? Well, they got four suits. Okay. 13 of each. 13 of each. 13 times four. Okay. You got ace. So you got, you got hearts. Clubs, diamonds, and spades. Whatever, spades. Um, and in each of those shapes, those, those uh, suits, are ace through ten. So ace is kind of like one or you know, four or eleven, depending on what game you're playing. Uh, so it's ace through ten, so seven, nine, ten, then jack and king. Okay, so there's your 13 cards. Ace through ten is a jack and king. There's your 13 in each suit. 13 in each, uh, in each suit, four suits, 52. Okay, so say we're playing a card game where I deal out to you each two, yeah, to you, five cards. All right. Now let's answer this question: Is it important what order they're in? The order that I give them to you. If I just give you a five-card hand, you pick it up, and we start playing, you have five cards. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter what order. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You can take from the bottom of the deck and then from the top. Well, not the order that I take it from the deck, but the order that you receive them. Or that's fine. Yeah. Like which card you got first. Now some games yeah, are it's it's time. important what order they come in, but what I'm specifying we start the game with five cards, yeah. right? And you, of course, the order is important if you want to get like a straight, but it doesn't matter that you got the two before the no. seven or the five before the whatever. You just put them in order yourself, okay? So you're not locked into that or anything. Um, so it's a combination so problem. Very good. So it's a combination problem. Let's just. Simply say is what? See what? Six. 52. 52, right? That's always the full set of stuff. And then 52C5. 52C5. And that would be 52 factorial over? Yeah. 5 factorial times 52, 52 minus 5. Right, so one thing you'll notice is this plus this is always this. Right? So what is it? Oh, 47? 47. 47. So this part gets rid of the bottom 47 cards that we don't care about, right? And just leaves 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48. And then the 5 factorial gets rid of all the ways you can order all those 5 cards. And what are we left with? How many hands are there? parentheses if you're going to use the formula. That's how many total hands there are, say, in a game of poker. That's how many are possible. A lot of them are nonsense. They're useless. You know, there are two of hearts and a five of clubs and just random cards put together. Okay. Uh, let's say, you know what a royal, uh, uh, royal, royal flush. Straight, straight flush? Straight flush? Royal flush. Royal flush? Yeah, royal flush is a straight because it's royal. Right? Yeah. So what's a royal flush? What's that mean? Same suit. Um, Same suit. Eight through ten. So ten all the way up to eight. Right? Yeah. So, how many of those hands are possible? How many royal flushes are possible? Four. Four, one in each suit, right? <coughs> There's four of them. So what's the probability of getting a royal flush? Four, four out of that. Four out of that. That's why getting a royal flush is so Very good. good. <laughs> yeah. Because that's the chance. No. I have. No, you yeah, have. Sure what? You how do you know? It's <laughs> how do you know how to play poker? I, I, you play poker. I have played poker, you know, 
not like official folk lore, but like. <laughs> you know, the interesting thing here is uh, about probability, I think probability is one of those things that people care the most about because they don't care anything else about math. They like to think about probability because they use it to make decisions whether or not to believe people, right? Yeah. Jessica says she's gotten one of those before. And it, now is it possible? Yes. It's not likely. It's pretty unbelievable, right? Pretty unbelievable that, that a person who has, you haven't played very much poker, played a few hands of poker, maybe got a royal flush, come on, there's Two, or two million, almost three million possible hands, and you played a few, and you got a row. It's unbelievable. Don't. Do it. <laughs> yeah. and actually, when you say when you say the word incredible, you're saying that you're saying like what's something incredible you're saying. It's not it's credible. Not credible. I don't believe you. Um, I but we make these decisions <laughs> to to do things or believe people or you know to to investigate the credibility of some statement. Even if we're not thinking about it, we think that's just not very likely. There's so many ways for it to happen. You haven't tried it very many times. How could you have done it already? She does chapter of cards. Um, and I'll get some cards and we'll try and work that in. Okay, All right, now I'm going to figure out what your homework is going to be.